What's up everybody? This is Prepper Princess. I thought it might be kind of a cool video to make some predictions about what I see in the future. No, I am not a psychic, but just based on the way that things are going in our country and in the world. So let's get to it. Don't forget to check out my book, Living on Almost Nothing. I will leave a link in the description below. And this is just some general information that I've been researching over the last few years. And I think that it's kind of interesting to see which way we're going. Now, don't think of this as better or worse than what we're at right now. It's just different. Uh, it's just a different world. I mean, can you imagine what our grandparents would have thought if we started telling them about the internet? They would have thought it was science fiction, and I'm sure that their grandparents probably thought that going to the moon was science fiction, and so on and so forth. So, let's talk about uh, new technologies that are coming out that I think are going to change the way that our economy works and the way that our world works in general. First and foremost, I do want to talk about automation and I guess you could call it artificial intelligence, but automation is more of a general and broad term. So an example of automation is now a lot of McDonald's have self-serving kiosks where you can place an order. Whenever you go to Walmart and there's no cashiers, it's all self-checkout. That would be automation or artificial intelligence, which uh, puts more money in the corporation's pockets and takes away the jobs of the individuals. Now, this might, it depends on how you look at it. Uh, me as a customer, I prefer using self-checkout because dealing with cashiers is just significantly slower. And that's how I like dealing with it as a customer. From an employee standpoint, makes things a little bit different. But I do think that automation is gonna be more mainstream with pretty much everything you do, everything from restaurants. And by the way, Red Robin, I went with my grandmother like a year or two ago and the waiter didn't even take your order. You placed your order on a small kiosk, which I thought was kind of stupid because I'm paying the waiter or waitress tip money to take my order. <laughs> so that can't be good in terms of tips, but this is something that's getting more mainstream and I think is gonna happen. Um, so the future of urban mobility and suburban mobility. So as you know, there is a plan to become carbon neutral by 2030 and gas, they are they're talking about changing the infrastructure of the United States to be directed to more towards solar, not sorry, sorry, not solar, electric powered vehicles. Now. This doesn't mean that gas stations are gonna go away and gas station attendants are gonna lose their jobs. It just means that the gas stations are now going to be solar charging stations. They're probably still gonna have the convenience foods inside. So it's gonna be the same thing. It's just that you, instead of pumping gas, you're pumping electricity. Right now, the technology has it so that it takes an hour to go from empty to full on a full charge and it costs anywhere between 23 and $28 to do that charge. So it's actually an inconvenience because when you're pumping gas, you're in and out in five minutes. With electric technology the way that it is now, it's gonna take you an hour. Uh, so that's not a good thing, but it's a good thing because I guess it helps our environment. Uh, the other thing is it had to do with commu commuting, um, autonomous vehicles. So. As you know, if you own a Tesla, you're probably seeing the very first stages of autonomy where it keeps you in your lane, but you still have to have your hand on the steering wheel. Eventually, we are going to get to the point where the car just drives for us. For me as a driver or passenger, I love this idea. However, it does happen to take away human control and fight or flight instincts or you know, putting on the brakes. But, and if you have half people who have fully autonomous vehicles and half people who don't have autonomous vehicles, then there's going to be a problem for that, those years in between when you've got some drivers and some that are autonomous. So, um, you know, people just drive different than machines do, obviously. 
uh, because machines do not have the instincts that humans have. So then it comes, that's what I think what's going to be happening with autonomous vehicles. From a personal standpoint, it's great. For our truck drivers, our train drivers, it's not so great. So there is current, like right now, there's a sort shortage of truck drivers, but once these trucks become autonomous, we're not gonna need truck drivers anymore. We're not gonna need Uber drivers or DoorDash or anything like that. It's all gonna be automated, which is kind of sucks, but that brings me to, nope, we're not there yet. So we've got the autonomous vehicles, the transportation that takes an hour to charge. Um, electric bicycles, are, I think, are going to be the complete future of urban and semi-suburban mobility. So when you, if you have an electric vehicle, you're not paying gas tax, you're not paying taxes, which is supposed to go to the infrastructure of our highways and such, but we all know it doesn't. However, you know, I've heard a lot of people who have electric vehicles, their registration fees are through the roof. So the states, local states and governments are trying to make up for losing the infrastructure gas tax that they would pay at the pump by just overcharging them for registration. So it is going to get to the point where since everything's already automated, taking carpools is going to be easier and it's going to be a lot cheaper. And I think that inside the cities, people just aren't gonna use cars anymore. Uh, I think that it's going to switch completely to electric bikes because electric bikes do not need to be registered. Uh, they do not require a driver's license. They don't require ID. You can charge them at home. And some of them go up to like 28 miles per hour and 40 miles per charge. And if most people are making their commutes inside an inner city, going to the grocery store, it's really only a, a, diff a distance of about four miles or less. And even if you look at statistics right now, the majority of us drive within that four mile radius. So I think a lot of people are going to be switching to e-bikes. Um, I'm hoping to be one of these people. I'm getting an e-bike. I will be doing hopefully a review on it, but uh, I am probably going to be getting rid of my car or even both of my cars uh, pretty, pretty soon here. And I'm really looking forward to the electric bikes and they are getting cheaper, their technology is getting better, and there are plans to have 300 million more of them on the road or on the sidewalks by 2023. And it's only, what, 2021 right now? So there you have it. Uh, the future of homes. So, whew. so you guys know that the price of lumber is skyrocketing. The wildfires are killing all of our trees, which is just wonderful, not really, but 3D houses. So if you guys haven't looked up 3D houses, 3D houses are made using local materials. They're made within two days, like within 48 hours, you can have a house fully per permitted 600 to 800 square feet and they only cost $4,000 to build and they require no labor. Like it's all done by computer. So you've got a man watching the computer and that's it. <laughs> I don't know if they call an electrician and a plumber to come in and put in the plumbing and electricity, but it's only $4,000, 600 to 800 square feet built within 24 hours. In China, I was reading this article that they claimed, I don't know if they did it, but they built 10 3D printed homes within 24 hours. And that doesn't really seem like that much of a stretch. If you're using local materials and it's already printed in the 3D printer, you just have to throw the materials into a machine and it builds it for you, I can see this happening. I, so. With the prices of houses right now, as you guys all know, you know, prices of houses are kind of skyrocketing. People are looking for smaller homes. They're looking for easier homes. A lot of places are becoming overpopulated where, as you know, in California, they're actually allowing residents to permits to build second homes on a 10th of an acre so that they can have in-laws and things like that because there's not a housing shortage, there's a space space shortage. 
So I think we're gonna be moving into smaller homes. Using local materials is much better for the environment and it's a lot cheaper. So I think that that's the way that it's gonna go for homes with, that's with building new homes. And I think that all new homes are going to require solar. I think that that's the way it is right now. I think that they do that in California. I don't know for sure, but that's what I heard when I was selling my house is that um, all new houses built in California are required to have a minimum amount of solar per house built. And I think that that's gonna move all across the United States. If you live in a dark area, it's probably gonna be wind energy or something along those lines. Yeah. So you've got the carbon tax, road tax, and rise in registration fees causing people to go more into urban mobility, electric bikes and e-scooters. And I believe that cars are, there's gonna be a lot less cars on the road. I do believe that there's going to be universal basic income. And I think that these stimulus checks that we are receiving are just the start of it. You know, everybody's sort of getting used to their stimulus checks. Right now, nobody wants to go back to work. <laughs> so, uh, people are demanding more money, more money, and they're becoming accustomed to getting money for free, for, for doing nothing. And I think that there might be some sort of uprising um, under the guise of rich versus poor. Um, however, it's just people that don't want to work. And I think that a universal basic income is going to be a requirement for the future of the United States, for people who would rather live not work than work. I also think that there's gonna be a rise in healthcare costs where that universal basic income essentially will only cover the cost of healthcare. So if you get a thousand a month, 1500 a month, whatever the UBI is, it's only gonna, co it's only gonna cover the medical care. If medical care becomes free, then we're gonna be taxed into poverty the entire nation like i believe it's like 40 percent of our gdp is based on pharmaceuticals so that would be bad that's all i can say that would be bad so when it comes to food i believe okay so i don't know if you all know about agenda agenda something um I want to say 2030 or the Green Deal or something like that. And then there's the Georgia Guidestones, only so many millions of people on earth. Well, we are getting to the point, not that the, that we're overpopulated, we have plenty of land available, but what the based on what we are consuming, we need four and a half earths in order to proceed at our current trajectory. So I think that there, there's going to be less beef because beef cows, take up the most amount of acreage uh, in in order to feed them and slaughter them and produce them so cows take up the majority of space and i think that what's going to happen is that beef is going to be made prohibitive prohibitively expensive i'm talking like 40 bucks a pound i think that that's going to happen in my lifetime and what's going to happen is people are going to not be able to afford that. So they're going to consume less beef and the price will stay high. So it'll be sort of like a rich thing. Like, you know how you go and get filet mignon and lobster at a fancy restaurant? That's pretty much what a steak is going to be in the future. And I think that because of that, a lot less arable land is going to be used for beef production and they're going to switch over to different products. Now, for all you meat lovers out there, you know, you're gonna love this next part. I think that the USDA is actually going to be in on this and they are going to back up with legitimate scientific information indicating that a lot of beef is not good for you. I think that that's pretty much sound advice is that people just consume way too much meat but i think that they're going to go so far as to like put it on the food pyramid you know when you teach children in school like don't eat beef you know it might be like beef is bad you know go with this and i think that that also with that goes dairy and for people who keep uh commenting in the comments that soy is poison i don't care what you think but 
The Japanese have been consuming soy and they are the longest living humans on this planet. And they don't drink really dairy milk, they drink soy milk. And I think that the USDA is going to come in and start saying, you know, soy milk is good for you, dairy is not as good for you, don't eat as much. And it'll just, that's how things happen. They happen slowly like the frog in the boiling pot. And they make you, the, the media will make you think that it's your idea. So that's what's going to happen. They'll make you think it's your idea to eat less beef by telling you that it's not good for you. Um, and I think that they're also going to be uh, pushing for less water consuming crops. So as you know, uh, we are currently in a, not extreme drought, drought, an exceptional drought. And people don't really put in any water conserving techniques until they're forced to. Also, 70% of the water, the fresh water that we use is for agriculture. Only 30% is used for the regular households. So where do we have to work to consume the least amount of water? Where, what, is, what is the biggest area that we have room for improvement? That is in our crops. So I believe that the USDA is going to push for less water consuming crops and they're going to push farmers to farm more crops that are that use less water and i think that things are going to be becoming a lot more local to your area for instance just as an example uh here in in the deserts of arizona they have trees that are called mesquite trees now i've heard that people hate mesquite trees but the truth is is that they grow beans on them on these trees that make flour this flour is low on the glycemic index. It is tasty. It tastes better than regular flour. It is a sweetened taste, but has no sugar. And it's just, it's, it's really good for you. So all these farms that are growing crops of wheat in the field every year that have to be chopped down and processed, and then they have to go and plant all new corn, which is called an annual it means that it has to be planted annually every single year whereas you can come in here and just pick the beans off of a mesquite tree every year and they'll come back the next year so and they don't require any water they just grow wild out here so so it would be like people in the midwest would be eating regular flour and people in desert regions would be eating mesquite flour and it's just like fruits and vegetables. So Florida is known for oranges. So Florida would be eating a lot of oranges. Uh, California is known for artichokes. So California will be eating a lot of artichokes. Here in the desert, people will be eating a lot of tunas, which is cactus fruit. Um, instead of green beans, we would be eating the processed cactus pads, which tastes like green beans and the Palo Verdes tree, which grows, and I've eaten these, by the way, at the library, they, at the library here, they grow like crazy. Uh, what did I just say? Palo Verdes trees, they grow pea pods that taste just like sweet peas off the vine. And they look just like sweet peas off the vine. But when you're picking sweet peas off of the vine, you get 20. These are trees that are full of them, full of them and you just pick a pod, you open it up just like a sweet pea and you eat it just like a sweet pea, tastes just like it, looks just like it, the texture is the same. So I think that, you know, people are going to be moving a lot more locally. That, um, so, you know, the crops that grow here naturally are things that we're going to be doing. So. Uh, and I think that a lot of fishing in the Colorado River is going to happen. In fact, I just went to the river the other day and uh, I was fishing and I saw crayfish. And I looked it up because I thought that that was really weird because I think crayfish, I think of Missouri or the Mississippi. So I looked it up and uh, crayfish are not indigenous to this area. But there he was looking at me, ready to, ready to sn He, You know what he reminded me of is those crabs on, on Finding Dory. I, 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 get out of here, I. Yeah, he was ready to, uh, ready to snap at me, but, and he didn't have any friends with him, so I didn't, it wasn't worth it. But uh, I think that with climate change, things are changing. So it's something that 
we're going to be forced into. It's not something that people are going to do of their own accord because that's just not what we do as Americans. We have to be forced to do something. We have to be backed into a corner uh, before we'll make any change because we do not like change. Now, with all of these changes, I'm not saying it's better and I'm not saying it's worse. I'm just saying it's different. And if you plan on being here in 20 or 30 years, you might wanna start getting used to it. You know, get yourself an e-bike. <laughs> Start looking into 3D printed houses. Be one of the first ones to have a printed a printed house. You know, uh, look into solar products and maybe converting your house to solar so that you'll be able to sell it. I think that eventually people will be forbidden by law to sell a house that does not have solar on it. That's just the way that it is, folks. And that's the way that I think it is. If you have any predictions, go ahead and leave them in the comment section below. Please do not get political and crazy. I'm just talking about general predictions of what I think is gonna happen, and I think that you should too. And don't forget, again, to check out my book, Living on Almost Nothing. I'll leave a link, and go ahead and hit the like button to help me out with the YouTube algorithm. And don't forget, folks, if you believe that you can or you believe that you can't, you are right. Prepper Princess out said Prepper Princess out. Get it. Oh, I got one too. Get it. Zoom out. That's what you were talking about. Yeah. Your avatar is a zoologist. You know my nephew, Maxwell, isn't that nephew? What a fascinating linguistics. I didn't have that last time. So your languages. Makes sense. He studies the entire language on his way to the point. He's 32. Was it 35? Time. Okay, let's get it on.